Good day everyone, welcome to mathgoserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over how to solve polynomial equations. We're going to be looking at how to use multiple factorization techniques to solve a quartic trinomial equation. If that sounds like what you're looking for, go ahead and hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We upload videos to our YouTube page on a regular basis. Alright, so the instructions are for us to solve the given polynomial equation. Solve the given polynomial equation. So let's say we have the polynomial equation um, 6x to the fourth minus 7x squared minus 5 equals 0. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and solve this. Now the first thing we're going to do is inspect all the terms of this polynomial equation and see if there is a greatest common factor that can be factored out. So if you look at all these three terms, 6x to the 4th, 7x squared, and 5, you can clearly see that there are no common factors to be factored out. All right. So now we want to factor this using the uh, factoring by grouping method. In order to factor by grouping, we need an even number of terms so we can extract greatest common factors. But in this scenario, we have three terms, which is odd. So we need to express this as four terms so that we can factor by grouping. In order for us to do this, we are going to focus our attention on the middle term. Okay? We're going to see if we can replace the middle term with two unique terms that enables us to factor um, a common factor from the first and last terms and the middle terms so that we can factor by grouping. In order to do that, we're going to make use of the X game, okay, or the AC method. So we'll call this A, B, C. So A is 6, B is uh, negative 7, and C is negative 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and play the X game or utilize the AC method to find those two numbers that can enable us to factor this um, quartic trinomial by um, grouping. All right, so AC goes on top. A times C in this problem is negative 30, and B is negative 7. So we're going to ask ourselves what two integers multiply to give you negative 30 and add to give you negative 7. So let's exhaust the combination of numbers that multiply to give us 30 and see which one can give us. Um, negative 7, okay, so 30, we know 1 goes into 30, 1 times 30, 2 goes into 30 15 times, so 2 times 15, 3 goes into 30 10 times, and then we have um, 6, 6, I mean 5, 4 doesn't go into 30, right, so 5 goes into 36 times. Alright, so which combination can give us 7? 130 is 31, 29, that doesn't work. 215 is 17 or 13, that doesn't work. 310 is 13 or 7. Voila, that's exactly what we're going to use to factor this by um, grouping, okay? So let's insert it into our X game. We're going to have um, AC, I mean, the two numbers will be 3 times negative 10. Alright, so we're going to replace the middle number with these two, okay? So we're now going to have 6x to the fourth. Now notice that this is a second degree term, so we're going to attach that x squared component to the two numbers when we're inserting it. So we have plus 3x squared, preserving that degree, minus 10x squared, minus 5 equals 0. Alright? Now we have four terms. We can now split it down the center right in front of the middle sign and factor by grouping. Okay, so this is has been the goal all along for the X game. Now if you take a look at the first two terms, you can factor out the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor there is 3x squared. So we factor out 3x squared. When we factor out 3x squared, it's as though we're dividing the, these two terms by 3x squared which leaves us with 2x squared plus 1. All right, and then the next two terms, negative 10x squared and negative 5, the GCF is negative 5. You always bring down the middle sign, negative 5. When we factor negative 5 from negative 10x squared, you have 2x squared plus 1. I mean, 2x squared, 
and then we factor on negative 5 from negative 5, positive 1 equals 0. Now you freeze here and do a real quick check to make sure that our factorization process is going well. And you do that by inspecting the quantities in the parentheses. You ask yourself, are they identical? And that's the case here. here so our factorization process so far is accurate. Now what we're going to do is take these two identical quantities and factor them out, 2x squared plus 1. Upon factorization, we are going to be left with these GCFs that we factored out, 3x squared and negative 5. Those two will be clustered together in their own nice little parentheses, 3x squared minus 5 equals 0. All right. Now take a look at what we have here. The question is, do we have any difference of squares here? Remember the difference of squares factorization technique? We talked about that in the previous tutorial. Those or difference of squares you have, if you have a square minus b square, that factors into the sum and difference of the square root of the squares, right? So you square root the first and the last term and write it as a sum and difference. Now if you take a look at what we have here, this is not a difference, so forget about this. This is a difference, but only x squared is a square. 3 is not a square, and 5 is not a square either. So we do not have a difference of squares here. Well, that tells us that we can't factor any further. So we're now going to use the zero product property and set both factors equal to zero. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and solve it. The first one, we're going to um, subtract 1 get the x squared isolated, so subtract 1, we have 2x squared equals negative 1, and then we are now going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and that gives us x squared equals negative 1 half. To get rid of the x squared, we are going to do the inverse of square, which is to take the square root, okay? So we're going to root both sides of the equation, like that, and that will give us x. Now, don't forget, anytime you root the square root of a square, you always have to add on plus or minus, okay? The square root of um, negative is i, the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 2 is just root 2. Now, we cannot have a radical in the denominator, so we have to rationalize, so multiply the numerator and the denominator by root 2. When you do that, you are going to get um, x equals plus or minus root 2 times 1 is just root 2 over root 2 times root 2 is root 4 which is just 2i okay now for the second equation we are going to uh, add 5 to both sides and that gives us 3x squared equals 5. We're now going to proceed to divide both sides by 3. And then we get x squared equals 5 over 3. To finish this off, we're going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. And then on the left side, we have x. And since we took the square root of a square, we have plus or minus root 5 over root 3. Now, we cannot have a ra radical in the denominator, so we rationalize the denominator, root 3, root 3, and that will give us our final uh, set of, t of roots, which is going to be root 15. 5 times 3 is 15 over root 3 times root 3 is root 9, which is 3. All right, so our solutions are as follows. We have negative root 2 over 2i, root 2 over 2i, uh, negative root 15 over 3, and root 15 over 3. All right? So this is how you find the, um, how you solve polynomial equations.